Today's episode of Dungeon Crawlers Radio is brought to you by Gamers Inn, your one-stop location for all your gaming needs. Located in Lehigh City, Utah, their fun and friendly staff will be more than happy to answer any of your gaming needs. Just remember, Gamers Inn, it's where adventures begin. Broadcasting live from the DCR studio. Oh, yeah! The Geek Revolution starts here. Excellent! Get ready for the number one hit geek radio show out there. Well, it is impressive, isn't it? Because it's time for Dungeon Crawlers Radio. Alright everyone, welcome to another episode of Dungeon Crawlers where we are live at the Halloween Expo. If you've already seen our post, you know we're here. And, well, Mackenzie's gone a bit evil. Yep, yep, yep. In fact, today is, she's not just evil, she's beautifully evil as, as an evil queen should be, is she not? Technically, I'm an elf today, not the evil queen, that's tomorrow. And anyone who's here... She's in a, a, a death gown. The dying gown. Dying gown. Dying gown. It has to be dying because technically she does not die. So let's get let's right. get the wording right. correct here, She's boys. Dying. Dying. And to, tomorrow she'll be evil. Oh. So the, oh, and I oh, demand oh. to be called your Majesty. So this is perfect. So I didn't notice the, the ears. good Mackenzie is dying today. No. And the well, evil goodbye, Mackenzie, Mackenzie will be here tomorrow. You guys imply I have a good side Hello, anyway. Fun Mackenzie. I mean evil Mackenzie. <laughs> Y'all imply I have a good side anyway. I mean. Hello, my victims are strung up all around the booth right now. Yes, they are, literally. And there's a there's a guy in the corner, like praying for mercy, and he's dead. It's so fun. Yeah, happened so, instantaneously. Uh, yes. So we'll leave it up to Mackenzie so that we don't end up like the victims in the rest of this booth to uh, introduce our next guest. Good answer, boys. So we are here with Russ Adams. I don't know if y'all have watched Jim Henson's Creature Shop, but he was on it, and he was one of my favorites. So say hi to our listeners. Hello. <laughs> it was so cool meeting you guys, especially this morning. That was great. Oh, my gosh. So I fangirled. <laughs> I've only seen Mackenzie fangirl with over one other person that was Elijah Wood, and that's when she asked him to literally jump on her back. And He, he wrote me. Yeah, I think I see that picture. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Yeah, he was—he like jumped up on top of her, had his hand up, like this is like what I do every day, and she's got this huge smile on her face, and there's at least six f- inches between the ground and the bottom of his feet, and so it's just like, what the heck is that? Is he peeing next? Yes, time? yes, we're. Oh you can hear in the background a, a it's horse. Kind of a, it's a full stream. Oh my gosh! Definitely has no prostate stream. issues over there. No. The horse took a dump, and I leaned over, and there's there's his behind right there in full front. I'm just like, what the heck? I, staring. At there it is. I don't think uh, anyone can ever complain about booth placement because they, you know, I'll no. just say, hey, you should have seen these guys. You yeah. know, it's a. They were inches away from a urine stream. You know? <laughs> and, and that we have large evidence. One, yes, we have yeah. evidence. We have evidence. Yes. Yeah. No, so, I've got two Great Danes, and I know that that stream is a lot less than that. You know, yeah. so great I thought Danes we dealt you. with some stuff. Yeah. They leave large landmines. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, then, and still there's a silver lining. It's not a racehorse. Yeah. It's not a racehorse. <laughs> it is not a racehorse. I don't get it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, we're Don't gonna move worry. on apparently because that so, went over my head. So for those of you that need a haven't hat. seen Russ's work, uh, we'll probably have to. I think there you can. There's a picture of Mackenzie smiling very largely with Russ. <laughs> In my defense, and behind I them, there's you. an awesome killer croc uh, and a lion type werewolf creature. Yeah, I, so it's it, it's a line. It's just a bucket list project. Okay. It wasn't for any kind of film or anything. But um, so I had this. I get really ticked off when I see like you know. I'm not going to mention any names because I don't know who your sponsors are. But um, <laughs> you know, like uh, these these rich guys go out and just slaughter these animals like lions and stuff. Yeah. So I created something. I, I trademarked it, tax, uh, mockydermy, and so 
I would rather just make you a line that looked as realistic as possible so you can hang it on your wall. Yeah. And let's just not kill them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, that is actually cool. Because, honestly, yeah. it sounds like too much work traveling so far and yeah. doing all that. Uh, on top of... Having to he's stop fine down over the there on the other side of the world. It. I don't need him over here. Uh, yeah, exactly. He looks cool. A picture's just as awesome. And it's, um, and it, what did you call it again? I called it Machydermy. Machydermy. Yeah. And it's probably cheaper. It's much cheaper, yeah. yeah. I mean, think about it. Well, that and let's let's let you know save the lion's life. You know, I mean, yeah. Let alone you don't have the risk of dying and, yourself. Exactly. Well, yeah. you know what? I kind of wish that you know, got a little paybacks. Yeah. You know, for the True. lions. You know, yeah. just sort of like come back with more than a scratch. You know, could you make could you make a realistic lion? Oh, we like got the full, full body with with one paw coming up and being like, <laughs> that look, you know what? My next, yeah, you just gave him an idea. And international sign of recognition. Yeah. From because the I, I feel like that would go a long way in kind of showing people, hey, this, this is what we think of it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe stand up, you know, and, show them the undercarriage. And what a conversation starter yours. at the same time, you know. <laughs> Mommy, why is that lion flipping me off? It's like, uh, That's we'll not his finger, dear. Yeah, we'll tell yeah. you. Later. <laughs> By well, the way, you guys should have told me what rating this was before I don't got worry, on here. Don't worry. Okay, <laughs> we're good. And if anything gets if if anything gets too bad, R two will just come in and scream. Wow! Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Because I I don't know if you guys were told. I'm like the most bleeped guy in sci-fi. So, well, are you really? Yeah, so, yeah, well, I have the distinction. I'm so happy. We about had that. a white nerdy rapper come on, and he at least dropped the f bomb. I think 87 times in 20 minutes. Jeez, I don't even know if I could do that. Yeah, man. so you're safe. I want to try and break that record. We are in a family-friendly place, though. Yeah. Yeah, we are. We, oh, yeah, I did the yet, show anyway, but yeah. Yeah, I want to accept this challenge. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'll hold Fair off. I'll hold off. That is Your some queen demands you don't do that. Coming from the next door, <laughs> is that yeah. I almost, it is. This it's is probably the reason why I'm wanting to accept this challenge. Yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> I almost feel like I'm in a zoo. I mean, there is a really? petting zoo over there. Yeah, there's, 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 there's some there's hormones running through yeah. that. You know, there was ponies over there. There were some goats. I Maybe you can do mermaid. a moxidermy for them next time, and then that way we won't have to deal with this. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's just uh, make it. We'll, we'll just you know yellow dye. We'll make it pee on command. Yeah, you can do that. Exactly. It'd be like a coffee pot. Little, you open up, pour the hot, you know, you put the, you know, and you just keep doing skin. that, you know? Yeah, right? and the tail could be the handle. Yes, every so time. imagine the lid. what we could do with constipation issues and things like that. Uh, I oh mean, goodness. that final explosion at the end, you know, grand finale, you know, and, yeah. Not where I expected that to go, and I kind of love it. You Smack know against the wall and, and, and slide down. Even That's though beautiful. I know we're that trying room. to make this realistic, right after that happens, I feel like Roman candles should definitely be involved. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Like, right out the shooting, park. shooting out exactly. We could have, exactly. we could, dude, we could have Jim Carrey spill out. <laughs> oh, you know, I mean, <laughs> after the Roman out. candles, that would, be, that, that would be the grand finale Instead of the, the grand finale. Jim Carrey. Exactly. Oh, wow. oh my God, it just wafts through here every now and again. Like I really feel bad for you guys. Oh, oh my god, yeah. 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 At yeah. least we have a barrier. I feel candy. sorry for the guys. It's not affecting the kids. Oh, yeah, we're still it. grabbing the, the barrier. Candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Wow. Oh, jeez. So, you're you're kind of doing, I don't. I know right now you talked about you're doing a class where you're teaching people how to make their own masks, stuff like that. Is yeah. that something you do quite often, or is it just a once a year not, thing? Because it's Halloween time, what? We don't usually, well, we try to schedule one before Halloween, Yeah. but... You know, a lot of people can't can't always make it, um, and we, we kind of I like to say they're impromptu, but we try to give everybody like a month's notice, yeah. and we can only really schedule them during seasons where where maybe maybe the film season is a little slow in that, that particular time for us, and then we can afford to to do them because yeah. you know a lot of you know our main gig is doing films, yeah. so and even commission work. Um, and, and we have, like everybody else, we have lulls in that particular season. So we try to stick some classes in there, you know, foam fabrication classes, latex mask classes, you know, stuff like that. How to burn a Muppet class, you know. I want to burn stuff. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, so yeah. what is the coolest and most, the coolest thing you've ever made and the craziest thing you've ever made? I know is that like trying to really choose hard. a child? No, not really. I know what my... I know what the worst thing I ever had to make was. Okay, that'll work. And I'm, I'm going to paraphrase, because I know we're in a family environment. I had to make a Bigfoot that was anatomically correct. 
And how, it became. I have to ask the question: How did they know it was anatomically correct? You got me, but <laughs> yeah, doesn't that also mean things are proportionally sized? Not according to this director, no. <laughs> okay, um, this is as bad as the nuts incident at Gaming Con. Because so we, his feet we really work huge. at. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll use that in a, analogy. So I would show his feet at a particular size. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's got to be bigger than that. And I'm like, what, what? Really? You know? And so to my, de- you know. <laughs> it was degrading, but I, I made the feet bigger, or the foot, you know. <laughs> and he's like, "No, no, no! It's, it's still got to be bigger." I'm like, "You've got to be kidding me! What kind of movie is this?" You know. And it was like, because it was it was a documentary. This was a reenactment of a, someone's eyewitness. Okay. You know, and I'm like, "You got an eyewitness that someone saw a big foot, and that's what they were looking at." <laughs> you know. You know. So anyway, so Not this the thing, fact this giant hairy thing is coming exactly. You run away. Giant hairy yeah. thing, right there. <laughs> So we make it bigger. Now we've got a baby elephant trunk, and I'm feeling really, really sad about my my lot in life yeah. here. This is not what I got into the business for. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was probably the most. Um, yeah, that was probably the worst. <laughs> the worst. The bladder right. hookup was fun. Yeah. Because it did have to urinate, like the horse. Why? You know. Yeah, through the foot, of course, you know. So, so would you say the Bigfoot, horse stream yeah. was comparable to the Bigfoot stream? Oh my gosh, what did yeah. you ask that? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, I would say that. There was a lot of weight. Yeah. A I believe the water phrase is because he could. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the Bigfoot project was probably the worst. That that Bigfoot project yes. was the was the absolute worst. So, yeah. so you've had multiple Bigfoot projects. Oh yeah, we get them a lot. I mean I, I created okay. that um, the Bigfoot that we have, sort of like a cousin between you know, or maybe a cousin of Harry and the Hendersons. I didn't want to obviously steal anybody's yeah. IP, but you know, it's such a rec- recognizable creature. I wanted to come up with something that looked a little bit like it, but wasn't ripping anyone off. So we came up with this guy, and we've done different variations. Uh, I got this one that's gray and white, and uh, we call him Rafiki. And we sold Rafiki to a um, a haunt in uh, uh, what is it? Um, Sorry, I got distracted by the horse pee again. Yeah. Um, so he's um he it was Flagstaff. He went to Flagstaff okay. in his haunt, and he's recently been in a commercial uh, for Whole Foods. Oh, so wow. they sent me this commercial. You want to know what Rafiki's been up to? Here you go. And he's running around Whole Foods trying to buy tacos, and he's like hitting on girls and stuff. And I'm like, that is not what I designed Rafiki for. You know. So, but no, it was kind of neat to see that. You know. Yeah. So I've done a lot of the Bigfoot creatures. Uh, actually, one is in uh, um, it's owned by Dollywood. It's called uh, Wild Adventure Theme Parks. Okay. And they call him Stomp, and he kind of goes around. And they got this weird smell that comes because they, they classify him as a skunk ape. So they've got this stink that comes out to let everybody know. Oh my God, Stomp is coming around the corner. I'm like, so now something I created is is like <laughs> associated with this really bad smell, and I don't know how I feel about that. But you know, but it's Dollywood, so you know, I mean, come on. And as a matter of fact, it's the same theme park that they shot uh, Zombieland. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Zombieland. Zombieland. Oh, okay, yeah. cool, cool. So that's that's who's got Stomp now. So I mean, there's been variations of him, and he's always fun to make. Um, yeah, so you know, there's been lots of Bigfoot projects. My favorite project to complain about, besides the Bigfoot, foot, foot. yeah, the foot, um, <laughs> was also one of my favorite projects to begin with. I had to make this animatronic deer for a movie. Um, and so I had to make it, it had to be hyper realistic. It had to be puppeted. And I had like, oh my God, it was like less than a month to make him. Wow. And yeah, cause that, that seems to be the, you know, everyone see you on television. They're like, Hey, you know, we know you can do this in three days. Let me stop you right there because that material was available. And usually it's the vendors that slow everything down. So, yeah. you know, that deer I was, was really say, cool. That illusion was broken like season one for me. Yeah. <laughs> the speediness of it. It's insane. And you know, a lot of people don't know. That was actual. That was actually what what happened. But it was actually less time than three days because we only had like ten hours of work time. The rest of the time was made up between these damn interviews that we had to keep oh, yeah. doing, you know, and, um, and and a couple other things that you know. Thank God I'm starting to forget, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, but we had like ten hours a day, so we had thirty hours to build these creatures, these enormous animatronic creatures, and that's why I kind of point and laugh at my friends for Face Off, you know. It's like <laughs> the same time, man, the same time frame. We busted out animatronic creatures. Yeah. <laughs> His Skeksis is so cool. Thanks. Yeah. Didn't you work with Bobby on that one, or am I re- not remembering that correctly? No, no. That was um, Yvonne and Tina that I got okay. to work with that one. Yeah. I worked with Bobby on Lady Kaka. Okay, that's yeah. what it was. I knew you worked with Bobby at some point. By the way, for those who don't know, Bobby is the winner of Jim Henson's Creature Shop. 
Yeah, we call him the winner, but he hasn't come up from air for air since he started at the Henson shop. Is he still there? Oh yeah, yeah. They actually re-upped his contract. I mean, you know, they they recognized right away how you know he was an amazing artist or is an amazing artist. So they kept him, but I think they've got him locked in some dungeon or something because Works you know we'll send him huh? text and it'll take them take him like six months to get back to him. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. He was actually telling me a really cool story about his creatures yeah. from the show as we were coming over here. Oh yeah. Because you were saying that you saved him from a landfill. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's sad. It really is. But so um, I happened to be in LA for a Son of Monster Palooza, yeah. and um, I think this was in 2014. Yeah, so they were supposed to be casting for season two, which we all knew never was never going to happen. And um, and so Bobby, you know, says, "Hey, listen, we have all the creatures here at the Henson shop." And they were going to keep them because I think I think they had a plan to either put them in somehow incorporate them into season two or whatever. Um, but when that plan dropped, uh, they, they just decided to get rid of them because you know like Hollywood has no respect for these props; they're yeah. always end up in landfills. And and so Bobby's like, "Hey, if you want your creatures, man, come get them." And so there was very few of us from the show that were in town at the time. It was just dumb luck. And yeah, they were all lined up on the floor and they were about to be pushed into these dumpsters, you know, and they were just going to go out to the trash and. So I rescued my Minotaur, I rescued um, uh, Green Jean, and I also rescued uh, um, uh, the Skeksis. So, you know, and everybody else took whatever creatures that they could find, you know, that they wanted. I mean, some of those creatures, like the damn fish (laughs) from the first episode with Tina, I never want to see that again. So it is happily rotting in a landfill, (laughs) I hope, you know, so. Well, where a fish should eventually go, yeah. Yeah. But... That, that tasty just, dinner, though. That is just Not sad. That fish. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> that they would just go throw them away. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that the Hensons kept. Like when we were on the show, we that first time when we walked onto the onto the set, um, where we were actually building creatures in the creature shop, and, and and on the walls you'd see like the dinosaurs from the from the dinosaurs television yeah. show and stuff. And, and the Skeksis, the real Skeksis from the movies. I mean, our our you know, I think Melissa said it. Um, on the show it was like our childhood was like created yeah, yeah. here and now we get to be a part of it and see these things those things were kept so there was some there was some sense of um uh like love that they had for those creatures you know so at least those were there but you know, ours are wow. gonna get straight to off into going the trash. straight to the trash man. that's right yeah it's too bad that really is okay so now we're gonna ask the question because i forgot it and then i remembered it and then you Baron were... stepped on the soundboard controls. <laughs> My big foot just got in the way of everything. Yes. You were asking him how he got into this. Yes, I know. I, I know. Okay. But it's not that big foot. Um, <laughs> so, moving forward, what got you into this? Because, you know, did you just wake up as a kid one day and say, hey, I want to do this? Or was there just one day that you just fell into it? What got you into making it? I, I know my, my earliest memory of, of wanting to, of just saying, this is what I'm going to do for a living. Um, I think it was like 10 or something. Um, I was watching uh, an episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Okay. And they went behind the scenes of the Incredible Hulk. And they were showing you how they transformed Lou Ferrigno into the Hulk. Yeah. And they're putting on the prosthetics and they're putting on the wig and the makeup and stuff. And I was like hooked from that point on. And um, and so I, I just kept saying I was going to do it. You know, my family's sort of like, oh, yeah, that's fine. That's cute. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, um, and the older I got the more they started to panic, like, oh my God, he's going to try to become a professional artist and he's going to like die penniless, you know? Yeah. And so, and that was like the theme of everything growing up. And my grandfather liked to have, he liked to, he liked to decide our career paths for us. And my career path, which he had chosen, not knowing how bad I was at math, he wanted me to be an accountant, right? And so I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. You know, I mean, at some point I would like to get laid. So, um, uh, yeah, if I slipped that one in there. Ha! Did you see what I did there? Yes. Anyway, <laughs> so so I uh, so I decided that I you know I was going to go to uh, the Art Institute of Pittsburgh and I was going to take their uh, their uh, special effects courses. And right at the eleventh hour, he talks me out of it. He scares the hell out of me. He's like, "You got to become an accountant. This is you know th- th- these are pictures of starving artists and blah blah blah." And you know, um, and so I, I, I finally, I, there was no way I was going to become an accountant. So I, I actually said, you know what, I'll just join the military. So I joined the Air Force and I actually ended up loving it. So I was there for like 10 years, you know. And when I got out of the military, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go back to what I wanted to do. And now's my chance, you yeah. know. 
And so I did. I got back into special effects and I sort of just, you know, found my way back into it. And I've been doing it for the last uh, nearly 20 years, you know. Um, and my grandfather, the whole time, he's like, no, 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 you got to go back to school and become an accountant. So I went back to school and I got, you know, I don't know, just right in his face. I got, you know, I, you know, I got my, my, my bachelor's in literature and my master's in literature. He's like, no, 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 you got to, you know, you got to get an actual degree. And I was like, you know, I, I don't want to do that. And yeah. it wasn't until I was on the Henson show that he finally calls me up and he's like, you know, there might be something to this art thing. And I was like, you can kiss my soul, <laughs> man. You know, I mean, I've been telling you that for years, you know. And it was like, and forget the fact that I had already been in business by that point, like 15 years. Yeah. I've been running my own special oh, effects yeah. studio. And he just sort of thought, oh, it's some weekend thing that he's doing. Because yeah. he's in Pennsylvania, I'm in Utah, and, you know, he's he's not seeing the day-to-day -day operation. I'd send him pictures. I, he couldn't see very well, you know. But anyway, so he finally agreed with me that, you know, that maybe I had chosen the correct path. So, well, that's right. good. All right. Yeah. He eventually but, came around. He eventually, yeah. After yeah. after giving me a 10-year detour, uh, detour, you know, yeah, yeah, he came No, around. I understand. No. Same way. Punk. Writing. It's like, no, get a real job. Go, I go know. That, that, that's not going to pay the bills. Get a real job. Exactly. And you know what? Uh, we were talking, I think it was us yeah. uh, talking this morning about everything around us is art. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything from that poster that you guys have hanging right there to the design of this microphone and everything yeah. set up. There's an artist. And my costumes. And your yeah. costume. Yeah. I mean, I mean, even if we get down to the nitty gritty, this netting right here, there was an artist, a seamstress. Um, a designer, somebody was involved in that process yep. because if it don't look sexy, it ain't going to sell, right? And and everyone tells us, and when we're growing up, that you cannot become an artist because of the fact that you're going to starve to death. It's yep. not going to make you any money. It's not a real job, you know. And so we 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 detract. I even detracted my own kids from it. Yep. My son said he wanted to get into film, and I smacked him. I'm like, do you not see me on a daily basis, you know, struggling yeah. to get through this stuff and blah blah blah. I was like, you know, and I heard my grandfather's voice coming out of my mouth. <laughs> You've got to get a real job, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 crazy because I mean you're right, and I mean back in the Renaissance though, artists in that were like elevated. They were amazing people because they were constantly creating and coming up with stuff. Now it seems like you're you're an idiot if you go that way. Exactly, and Just like I said, yeah. nothing exists without some form of uh, some artist touching it in some way. Yeah. I mean, even even downtown developments. I mean. Street lights. Everything else is designed to look attractive yep. to the to the general public and to the tourism and stuff like that. And yet, we still tell our artists not to become artists. So, yeah, you know, our movies are based on stories. Yeah, I, I know. It's, it's I crazy. still hear it's my insane. mother's voice in my head from time to time. And the crazy thing is, this gave me validation, Kay, like your grandfather. She came to me for sewing help. I'm yeah. like, are you kidding me? Did I just enter the Twilight Zone? Because I never, ever, ever dreamed yeah. that would be, I never want to be in the realm of possibility. Happens. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's funny. And I, I would have been like, if that was my grandfather, I'd been like, go to hell. You know? <laughs> go to hell, man. Give me a cup of coffee. You yeah. know? I mean. Wow. So, what is on deck for you next? I mean, what other than going to conventions and stuff like that? What else is on deck for you? We got we got some big things coming up that I'm really excited about. A couple of things I can't talk about. I'm meeting with some producers um, Saturday night to talk about a project that might be uh, filmed in China. Um, we're talking to uh, you know I've started a little. It's sort of like a vlog, you know, mm -hmm. for uh, for for YouTube. Um, you know, a little creature, it's called The Creature Designer, and, you know, we've got four episodes in the can. We're going to, you know, post it as soon as we get the entire season shot, and I'm kind of proud of that. i got three new books coming out, you know, and that's that's good. One of them is to tell all about the Jim Henson show. You know, it's called, you know, Surviving Reality. This is not that show. Um, the This is not that show part is a little bit of an inside joke. Uh, producers are... <laughs> anyway, so, um, you know, so we got, we got a lot of stuff coming up, and... Um, and I, and I wish I could talk about most of it, you know. I no, mean, it's okay. We've got big projects for with Ogden coming up. and you so NDAs and stuff like that, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, NDAs. Some things that you just want to kind of keep under wraps until you're ready to release. you you got all the, the marketing involved and yeah. stuff like that. So, you know, very exciting stuff. I mean, and when it does, you know, you know, when it does come out, uh, you guys, I'll let you guys know. Cool. You know, yeah. it'll be great. So what is it like seeing a creature you've created 
in, in a movie or at a theme park or just out there where people are enjoying it and getting excited about seeing it or screaming because they're seeing it. I mean, what does that feel like? Oh, I'm, it's, I'm a giggling dork most of the time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so basically you were me this morning. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I love that. Don't, don't. That, that was oh, awesome. That, and, like, made my weekend. And by right the way, there. we did arrange for a hearse. Oh, yes! fantastic. <laughs> we're going to get a hearse picture? We're yeah. getting the hearse nice. picture. Yeah. That's going to be sure. fantastic. Yes. So they they want to be stuck in a hearse. Together. Yeah, we just want to lay down in the back of the hearse and get our photos taken. Awesome. Yeah. I'm bringing the chains. <laughs> All in the chains. I'm going to have to call my wife later. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you're going to see on the internet. <laughs> it's going to be a little weird, but just go with it. But maybe next it's time you'll me. come to the convention with yeah. me. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Him talking to his wife. I yeah. don't have shame. You're talking to the girl who whips Carl Urban. I know. Yeah. With Carl Urban. That is fantastic. I'll have to show you the photo later. I, I never, did not know that. You didn't know I worked You've Carl had Urban? Elijah Wood ride you like a pony. Wow. And you've whipped Crazy. Carl Urban. <laughs> I've also had a and dance had, with Chris Evans. And you've had a dance with Chris Evans. I fought over Robin Hood with my sister. Not sure who came out on top with that one, though. Crazy to uh, Selena. You did because you had Elijah Wood on your back. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> All right. I, I accept that logic. All right. Nice. Wow. All right. So, so I have a question, though. Go for your question. Okay, so every time you create a creature, when you're done, do you already have an idea in your head of what his personality, his or her personality, or its personality should be? Yeah. When Okay, so, and we did that a, a lot on the Hanson show. They wanted backstory. But, and that was for stuff that we were designing and stuff. And if we're doing something off our bucket list or if it's something for us, then, yeah, we'll go ahead and put that in there. But a lot of times that's handed to us through scripts and stuff. Okay. So you kind of like, it's actually, in, for me, it's harder to come up with my own backstory because of the fact that, you know, I've got so many damn things running through my head that it's hard to like, yeah, maybe this and, you know, maybe that. And, you know, but when, it, when a script's handed to you, it's laid out and you're now like comfortable with the fact that this is, this is what they want. So it's got to come out in this. If there's a little bit of a comedy to the character, you got to put like some little twitch in there that, you know, that'll bring that across, you know, so... You know, it's kind of a toss up which one's better, you know. I think it depends on the artist. I kinda like I kinda like the direction, you know. because um, my bucket list is is vast. Yeah. You know. I mean it's 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 vast. Like the killer croc. You know, I put that up on Facebook. I was like, somebody help me here. Do you want Rock Steady and Bebop or you know, Killer Croc. Which one should I work on? Because they're all on my bucket list. Yeah. And they were all like, you know, Killer Croc, blah blah, blah. you know, so I'll Put another I don't know, list up. Rock City and Bebop would be awesome. Yeah, and everybody yeah. thought I could create them at the same time. I'm like, guys, no, with one at a time. Yeah. It's one of these three. Yeah, yeah. You know? It was like I'm not pulling out a you know a, you know a couple of twins, you yeah. know. I mean <laughs> it's not as easy as giving birth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna get some haters. Yeah. <laughs> Elias has already given him dirty look. Yeah, yeah, I think you got two already. I, mean. yeah. <laughs> I know. You don't I know. know yet. How can you say? <laughs> Look on the internet. See what our hater counts at now. I was going to say, I'm not going to get into that because I do have an idea. All right, all right. I do have an idea. I have kidney stones. Oh, yeah, I heard that hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Uh, That hurts. Yeah. So how can I, our listeners find you if they want to see behind the scenes? Oh, you, wanna, you want me to give that up after I made the comment about pregnancy? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's great. What's your website? <laughs> <laughs> they already know because they're listening to the show. I know, yeah. Well, fair enough. So, uh, so yeah, if you if you want to look me up, um, you, you can find me on Facebook. Um, just look up Russ Adams on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Um uh, but my website is, I got two of them. One's for my books. It's, you know, uh, russadams.me, you know, M-E. And then, um, and then uh, the other one is uh, escape design, the letters fx.com. So. Sweet. Right, and for cool. the record, boys, Turnabout is fair play. Oh, it is. I'm going to get some. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get some, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, you can't, if you can't take it, don't dish it out. Dude, and, you know, I, I think I'm pretty subservient, you know. I mean, like before I left for the show, I, you know, my wife laughs, right? Um. But I made her, like, dinners for the weekend because I know she'll eat, like, crap if I'm not there, Aww. you know, cooking her dinner. So I pre-cooked all these dinners. That's I so made sure cute. the kitchen was clean, you yeah. know. And she's giggling because she's like, yeah, the role reversal is not lost on me, you know. It's like, yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. See, he is a nice guy. I'm a because nice guy. Because he made guy. that comment doesn't mean you need to send him hate mail. Just no, but it would be fun. Hate mail's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That way you at least know you struck a nerve and... 
Oh. They like and you somebody was to, listening. Yeah. You know? If you don't have anybody fighting against you, you're doing something wrong. Really? Yeah. I, you know? mean, I mean, I, I was hoping that, you know, that the horse urinating behind us... <laughs> Wasn't the show stealer, you know? Like, <laughs> no, that wasn't just, the showstopper here. No, just one of those those funny side moments. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to the audio to see how well it's heard. <laughs> how well the stream? Well, the smell has at least dissipated. Yes, you the know. smell has dissipated. It's gone away. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm wondering why you were gone. Is it how how uh, how wet is the uh, the bowel movements? I mean, are you guys recording that at yeah, all? Uh, I don't know. We haven't had any of those recorded yet. It no, it wasn't sounded. recorded, but it stunk. It, it's, it know, did? Oh, yeah. I, I think he's, I he's getting leave. his fiber. See, and that's a, you know, I grew up on a farm, so I, I kind of yeah, used to it, you know. It's like, yeah, you know, it's like, Dad, that stinks. No, 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 that's the smell of money, son. You know? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So. My All dad right. is a plumber, so I'm pretty. Oh, oh. so damn, that's even worse. <laughs> yeah. Because at least it's fresh stink. Sometimes yeah. that plumbing <laughs> stuff is old stink, you know? Yeah. I desensitize a little bit. Yeah. I live behind a meat farm, guys. I mean, honestly. Oh, pig farms. Now that's... <laughs> you said meat farm. Meat. Oh, yeah. But, there's oh, mink. mink. Oh. Mink. Oh. Yeah, there's, there's a mink, mink farm in Mink Salt Lake? have their own special scent. There's several in Lehigh. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah mink oh. have their own special scent. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. Skunk oh. plus... Skunk. Tires. Yeah. Um, mixed yeah. with, like, 12-day-old... Yeah. Oh. Fourteen-year-old gym short. You know, yeah. Yeah. the Jimmy so Fallon eh, looks better with my blonde out wig. The sun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Limburger, Limburger cheese on the sun probably we'll take a dinner break now. Yeah, it might. It might. Yeah. Killing so. All right, folks. So <laughs> the horse just spoke. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, with awesome. that, Gosh, Mr. Ed, you're not on this one. Check out uh, Russ's stuff. Uh, go to his website. Pick up his copy of his book, especially if you're interested in uh, learning this stuff. Oh yeah, that. just um, it's on Amazon. You guys can get it on Amazon. It's just called the Workshop with Russ Adams is the series, and we've got latex mask making, creature fur and hair, and shrunken heads. We got more coming out like wildlife uh, puppets, cool. realistic nice. wildlife puppets. Yeah. So, so check that stuff out, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye. And hopefully, Mackenzie won't faint. Oh, that'd be good. You're listening to Dungeon Crawlers Radio. Please subscribe and follow them on Facebook or Twitter, Bridges. No, we're even promoting these filthy idiots. Who doesn't like them? Who doesn't like anyone? They are friends, Bridges. They are friends. No, shut up. Please subscribe.